icons, icons, icons. Everywhere you go, you are bombarded with all kinds of icons and logos. Well, wouldn't it be nice to actually be able to animate them? Well, today I'll teach you how to take 2D vector illustrations from Adobe Illustrator and animate them in After Effects. So stay tuned to learn how. So here is my Illustrator file. One thing you'll notice is that I've named all of my layers. It's very important to name all of your layers so you actually know what layer you're animating in After Effects. It's also very important to know what you want the animation to do so you'll know how many layers you need and how you need to separate your layers. After you have all of your layers organized, the next thing you wanna do is make sure you save your project as an Illustrator file. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your After Effects window or project. Um, I'm going to import the icon image that we'll be using, the 2D vector image that we'll be using. So I'm gonna to go to import file. Here is my camera icon. So when I previously showed you the structure of the 2D vector image, it had multiple layers. So this is why it's important. So what you're going to do is instead of import as footage, you're going to go to composition retain layer sizes and import that. What that does is it allows you to keep all of the layers as well as retain the size of the actual artboard. So if we double click our camera icon composition, you will see all the layers laid out here. So now you have all of your layers imported. So you can actually animate them, you can keyframe them, you can make changes to them, but I'm going to pull up my timeline, timeline a little bit. There are a lot of layers, so it can get a little overwhelming. So what I like to suggest is kind of animate in sections. So I, if I know what layer I'm going to start with, I'm just going to move these down the timeline so they're not visible right now. And I like to work layer by layer. Something else you can do is instead of moving everything down the timeline, I'm just going to undo that, is you can actually click your shy guy icon and then click them here and it just hides them. So you just deal with one layer by one layer. Um, this is just if too many layers overwhelm you. For me, it really doesn't bug me too much. So I'm just going to begin with actually animating these layers. Now I'm just going to go layer by layer. I'm just bring this to 100%. And with my big circle layer here, I'm going to do a radial wipe. So I'm gonna to go to my effects and presets. Type radial wipe. And double click that. Make sure your layer is selected if you double click it. There we go. So if you look here, what it does is it I'm going to set my first keyframe about right here and I'm going to do transition completion and I'm going to bring my next keyframe to about here so it's about two seconds and I'm going to make it 100%. Now one thing I like to do is put a slight feather, feather, <laughs> feather, feather on it so it has a little blur. And what that does is here it kind of gives it that motion blur appearance. So we can render. We can see that happen. Let's watch that in real time. I actually wanted to go a little slow because I'm gonna have other things animating on. Typically I would have that transition a little faster, but I'm gonna have multiple objects transitioning and animating on at the same time. Okay, so actually I am just going to move these down the timeline to get them out of the way for now. The next layer I actually want to animate is going to be camera body. So I'm just gonna drag that here. And I'm going to animate the scale and the opacity of the camera body. So I'm just going to press hotkey T for opacity, shift F, S for scale, and I'm going to bring to the beginning of my timeline. So let's see, I want the opacity. I'm going to keep 
frame 100% here. And I'm going to go zero. And scale, we're going to do the same thing. I'm a fan of easy ease to make transitions and animations smoother. So I'm just going to select my keyframes and easy ease. Now for the actual scale, I want it to be, I want it to slow down as it scales in. So what I'm going to do is go to my graph editor, which is right here. I'm going to select these keyframes, push this back, pull this forward, and that way it's a smoother transition so it slows down as it scales in. Now the next layer I want to animate will be the light orange. And your project file can look completely different. All I say is have an idea of what you want your actual animation to look like and just kind of animate in those layers. So layer things um, top to bottom. You may get into after Effects and realize you should reorganize your layers a little bit, which is fine. For instance, this square layer here, I want to bring right above my camera body layer. So you can just shift those around. Um, but just animate in steps and know what you want your animation to look like, which will actually help you with animating. Right now, if you're looking at it, you're probably like, well, what is she doing? But as you start to animate, you'll see things come together. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through um, and just animate multiple layers. I'll speed up the footage, but you should still be able to see what I'm doing. And if I see anything that's really important or different than what I've previously done, I'll just stop and explain what I'm doing.
separate layers. So it's really important to know what you want your animation to look like and how you want it to animate in order to get everything to animate properly. So definitely have a good idea of what you're looking for. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a background. And one more thing you'll notice is as I animate it, there's always something happening. So there's never just stagnant time or time where there's nothing moving. So that's just a good way to make sure your animation flows. So we're going to go to Layer, New, Solid. I'm just going to name it Background. doesn't really matter what the color is because we're going to change it anyways. So I'm going to bring the back layer, background layer all the way down. Effects and presets. I'm just going to go to Ramp. We're going to do a gradient ramp. Now I'm going to Turn it to radio, and let's see, let's swap the colors so it's more of a vignette, and I want this color to be kind of a light bluish color, so just adjust it to the color that you're looking for, and I'm just going to bring this down to the center, expand this out. So just adjusting the end of the ramp and the start of the ramp to get you that gradient effect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have everything move off of screen. So it's going to look like there's just wipes off the screen. So the layer that we're going to animate is just going to be the big circle layer. So everything else is going to follow that layer. So the way we'll do that is we'll parent all of these layers to layer 13. So I'm going to select all these go to preset 13 big circle so that means anything that happens to that layer will happen to these layers so I'm gonna give it a good second after it fades in bring my timeline over and then big circle I'm gonna do P mark the position here go down some keyframes screen and you see everything follows it because it's parented to that layer. Just move it off screen. So if we just shorten the timeline, it's gone. Now what I want to do is add a motion blur to all of the layers so that way as they move off screen really fast you'll see a blur. I'm actually going to bring these closer together. these layers motion blur and I'm going to enable that here so that way it'll blur as it speeds off screen see that blur there without motion blur and let's go back here motion blur without it so it gives it that natural movement look so let's render this out it. Now the final thing I'm going to do is just add some sound effects. So I'm going to go to my project. And this is just the background music. It's something else I purchased from Audioblocks. Um, in my last video I mentioned that I do have an annual subscription where I pay every year and I get unlimited sound effects and music. So if you're a person that uses a lot of sound effects and background music, this is a great way to save money if you are actually going online and purchasing it. So this is my sound effect. I'm going to bring that down. Place it about here. I should look at the wave form. Try to line it up. Perfect. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. So I pretty much tried to line this waveform up with these keyframes. So really that's it uh, when it comes to animating icons. There are so many ways you can do it, but the main thing is make sure you know what you want your actual animation to look like. Plan out your layers and then go on After Effects and have fun just animating different layers, position, scale, opacity. There's so many different layers that you can animate, but just by doing everything and having multiple movements at a time make it so interesting. Well that's it. Pretty easy, right? 
Make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe to see more tutorials.